Hi friends, this is Haruka from Planet Education. I'm also the host of College Knowledge Webinars. Uh, today I wanted to tell you about what moving into college looks like this year. Uh, fall 2020, as you know, is just such a surreal uh, experience. But I want to talk about how uh, campus culture is shaping uh, the dynamics of moving into colleges and what's happening before, during, and after the move-in process. So colleges are approaching um, this new semester in different ways. Um, in California, most of them are entirely virtual, but uh, let's take a look at some of the other schools. Uh, for example, Boston College, they are opening up and it, uh, similar to many schools that are opening up, they are requiring students to get tested for COVID-19 before they get onto campus. Uh, so if you're the parent or the student, both of you, both of us, uh, you know, both of you might be doing that at home first before landing onto campus. Other families, um, I have one student who is currently at Reed in Oregon, and previously they would have just flown her out, but um, with an abundance of caution, they're driving. It's like 10 hours out there, and that takes a lot of logistics too, right? You have three, par three two parents, one kid, and driving two vehicles up there to move in, etc. So it's a lot more effort and energy, uh, but um, and then once you get there, the, the parents aren't allowed to go inside the actual uh, housing, the dorms. So it, there's like a handoff as well. Um, some places I'm hearing that, that they're very cautious. Everybody's wearing masks, which is a good thing. Um, but then there's still areas of caution. Cornell University uh, has uh, had a bit of a... Um, yeah, at Cornell, a lot of the RAs protested uh, last week, just prior to the move-in dates, saying that they were not getting enough support. And uh, they put in requests with demands of a mixture of additional safety measures, uh, representation in some of these decision-making processes, hazard pay, it, uh, more PPE, protective equipment, and cost of living increases because of all the additional responsibilities that are, you know, de facto part of the RA responsibilities. The RAs, the resident advisors, are not considered the people who are going to be enforcing all of these behavioral contracts, right? A lot of universities are saying you must comply. You're not allowed to, say, gather in large areas, but sometimes the RAs end up being the enforcers of these rules. And so understandably, the RAs are uh, at Cornell, uh, were able to petition and, and uh, got many of those uh, demands met. Uh, it was like a incredible online petition. You can look that up on the Cornell Daily Sun if you're interested. Uh, so uh, once you are on campus, what is it like? So parents are um, realizing that it's a stark contrast to uh, student orientations that they they may have experienced when they were students or maybe with some of their older children because student orientation this year is definitely different. You know, usually student orientation, especially for freshmen, right, it's a big hurrah and a very exciting and there are huge gatherings and it's a celebration, you know, just beginning your whole college experience, but this year it's definitely muted. Uh, you can see that because campus gatherings are limited to um, no more than 50, or in some places, no more than 25, uh, the whole atmosphere is more muted and there's a tension in the air and seriousness. Um, when there are gatherings, even you, you may have read about Syracuse University where there was a a gathering of over 100, 200 people, something like that. Um, you know, there's a lot of criticism all in all directions because we are putting ourselves and our whole community in jeopardy. Uh, 
in some cases <laughs> in California, it's just again, surreal. But this week we have had the California fires and some of them are, it's not just one fire. They're like 200 plus uh, fires that are um, taking place at all parts of the country. And some of these are unprecedented, perhaps the second largest fires in, in, the, in our state's history. So places like uh, UC Santa Cruz have the have had to evacuate 1,200 students, faculty, and administration, and they are temporarily being housed at San Jose State University. So <laughs> these these people are currently evacuating and sheltering in place at the same time. So these are just tremendous. Uh, acrobatics that the universities are having to uh, manage. So much going on. If you are a parent or if you're a student that is headed to campus uh, in the next few weeks, what can you do? I think number one is to check your campus newspaper. That's like the best source of information because uh, they are um, providing current information that is, uh, you know, as accurate as can be. Um, uh, if you are new to the school, one thing, or actually it doesn't even have to be new to the school. If you're a parent, check out if there's a Facebook group for your child's campus, because especially for those of you, you know, for, for those of us coming in from California, the West Coast, uh, there are Facebook groups so that you can kind of gather and, and meet each other before you go on campus and a lot of information sharing. I've heard from some parents that it's been really invaluable to gather those best practices in terms of, you know, how do you get the COVID testing? When do you do it? What are some tips? How are you going to get housing? Where do you get housing on campus or uh, links like that? Uh, so check that out. And then another great source is YouTube. Go to YouTube and do a search for Move In Day Fall 2020. And whether you have uh, information about your college campus or others in that area, it'll be very uh, eye opening. You'll get to see the specifics of what these kids are going through, uh, the challenges. It's just a reality check. So I hope that helps. So there you have it, campus culture and how it affects Move In 2020. I hope that helps. Uh, follow me on uh, my website, planeteducation.com. I am also providing uh, my whole College Knowledge webinar series um, uh, for students and families who want to boost their college knowledge. Um, it's never... Uh, too early, never too late to boost your college knowledge. Hope that helps. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.